Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the very first Live and Uncut workshop number one. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a little while now, actually, to uh, set up a workshop uh, for people that are interested. Uh, the workshop's going to take you basically right from the start, from the basics of choosing your camera, right the way through to uh, composition, learning how to take street photography, a little bit more about landscape, architectural type work. And so I hope you can uh, find the, the show of interest to you. It's basically set up for those that have really just sort of got into uh, photography um, recently. You may have got a camera this Christmas for the first time. You may have been bought a DSLR and you don't know where to start. And hopefully I can help you through with that. Um, it's all about my experiences. I'm not the be all and end all of photography. Uh, it's basically what I've learned from reading books and uh, having uh, some tuition from uh, certain masters around the world. And obviously backed up from what I've learned from the show, the Photography Live and Uncut show, which goes out every Thursday evening. So I hope you enjoy uh, basically what I'm putting together for you. It's going to be over a period of time. It's not uh, It's not going to be just for a fixed period. And I'll interlace that, so to speak, with the, with the Photography Live and Uncut show, which goes out, as I said, every Thursday. But today it's, uh, it's a Sunday. It's afternoon. It's pouring with rain in London, as always. Uh, has been for the last few weeks and uh, i know people up in the north of the country have really been suffering uh, quite badly with the with the floods so let's get started um cameras it's always a very difficult decision to make when you're looking to buy a camera um where does one start you could basically say i could just buy myself a little little tiny compact camera here this is an old uh, nikon Coolpix. Uh, uh which one is that the l l12 um it really is just a camera you've got to decide the camera which is going to suit you not the one that your friends got not the one that a professional's got not the one that your most favorite photographer uh has uh to use because basically you've got to have a camera which is going to suit you so it is essential for you to get into the camera shops those that are still around and try and feel and use the camera in the shop there and get to know it uh, there's no point in buying a camera which uh, your friend has got so you want to buy that camera because it looks good and believe me it doesn't work that way you have to learn how to use your camera so as I say you may want to choose to buy a small Coolpix camera to start off with something of this nature a very small compact camera which is going to suit you down to the ground to get you started Something maybe with a potential that would give you an opportunity to switch to some form of a manual operation where you'll be able to choose. And we'll be going through this, whether you'll be able to choose aperture priority or shutter priority or straight manual, a camera which basically will give you that option to move forward for the, for the short period of time, or maybe one which you want to keep for the rest of your camera photography life. So really give it some thought as regards to the camera that you're going to buy. You may have, in actual fact, still up on your shelf or in your cupboard, an old DSLR 35mm film camera. There's nothing wrong with using one of these cameras. In actual fact, film photography is making a real big comeback these days. And you can get your film processed, get your CD of, your, of the film, put it into your computer, and you're basically what we term as a hybrid type photographer these days where you've got your, you've done the film work, but you've, switched your negative into the into the cd onto your computer and you're working through with uh i don't know any one of the many editing programs out there like lightroom which is my preferred uh editing program will be coming i'll be coming around to showing you how to use lightroom and all that sort of thing to enhance your photographic skills but the main thing about buying a camera is getting to know it that i cannot uh make this more simpler in the straight comic get to know your camera please please read the main uh, the manual so important to read the manual you just cannot pick up a camera well you can pick the camera up and start shooting obviously but you will never learn more about your camera unless you in actual fact you're using it you're using it and you're in actual fact know how it is best used and you've studied the manual this camera here that I'm holding up is a Nikon EM. It's a 35 millimeter camera. I still use it to this day with film. Superb results with it. it. Suits me down to the ground. The lens in actual fact on it is a digital lens, a 50 mil 1.8 digital lens, which obviously still fits all the Nikon cameras. Moving on, basically 
as things stand, you're probably going to want to buy one of these. Now, this is a, a Fuji film mirrorless camera. It's uh, uh, it's the XT10 for for your with a with an 1855 zoom lens fitted. Now, the majority of you will probably be interested to move into digital photography straight away and not get involved with film. So, yes, I would suggest you start looking around at cameras which are going to suit you. That doesn't matter if it's a Nikon, a Canon, a Fuji, as in this case, Olympus, Panasonic. There are literally loads of cameras out there. But one thing you have to make sure is that camera works for you. You understand. And basically, when you come to use the camera, it is like second nature to you. Please remember, the camera is your tool. It's not there to show people how good a photographer you are. Now, I'm not going to be talking here, I, I would hasten to add, probably to uh, photographers that are using full frame, uh, full frame uh, cameras, like the Canon 5D uh, Mark III and 5DSR and the Nikon uh, 700s, 800s and the uh, D5, which has just been brought out. I'm assuming that those guys know how to use their cameras. If you are just starting off in a, in photography and you've bought a camera of that nature, you've got a lot of homework to do because those are real tools for the job. And uh, there's a lot more to the camera than just sticking it on the auto mode and shooting away. So I think you're probably going to be looking at buying something along the 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 uh, the, the way of a, a mirrorless camera or a low end, dare I term it, DSLR like the Canons and the uh, Nikons in particular. I'm very familiar with the, the Nikons like uh, the D3300 uh, or the 5200, 50, that sort of nature, where, it's a, where they term as a one and a half crop. Again, uh, there's a certain things that I'm going to be mentioning here and you want to say, hey, what's that all about, Paul? We will come to it about filter and sensor sizes. Sensor size, I should say, not filter. Sensor sizes with regards to each camera. So the basic point I'm really making in this particular episode is to make sure you have a camera which is suitable to you and suitable so that you know that you're going to know how to use it. Please don't get um, compounded and confounded by all the all the, the selling aspects from a particular guy in the shop because he knows about Canon. You may not know how you know may not like the way a Canon works. You may not like the position of the buttons on the back of the camera. Please take all this into consideration. If it feels right in the hand, it's the camera for you. Price-wise, I'm not going to get involved with that with you with regards to yourselves. You know, I know you can spend 250, you can spend a thousand pounds on a camera, but make sure the camera works for you. Then we just move on very briefly to one thing I heard in a shop today. A lot of people will buy a camera with an 18 to 55 zoom lens fitted to it. This is pretty much a basic what they term as a kit lens, which base will effectively start you off on a good uh, range of photography uh, ranges of shot that you want to take. It's an extremely good lens to buy, first of all, with a camera. And a lot of cameras, when you first buy them, do come with this type of lens. But I heard this salesman say today, sooner or later, you want to buy yourself a telephoto lens. And I would say to you straight away, stop. Do not get caught in the run of the mill. I've got my 1855. I now need a bigger lens. You don't. The only time I think you will need a bigger lens is when you're going to, when you have decided on the type of photographer that you want to follow, uh, photography you want to follow. If you want to follow sports photography, then yes, you're going to need a bigger lens. But I would hasten to add that probably the best thing for you to look at the next time you're purchasing a camera and you've got your 1855 lens, is to look at buying what we term as a prime lens. This is a 35 millimeter Fuji 1.4. The 1.4 is re referenced to the aperture. We'll come to all this at a later stage. And really what I want you to uh, realize is the 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter lenses are ideal lenses for you to add to your kit because that will make you work better for your photography it's all about basically making you realize how to take photographs a zoom lens you stand still and you zoom in and out and compose your photograph with a prime lens 
you have to do the work. You have to move in and move out to get your get your image, which is uh, right for you and compositionally right for you at the end of the day. So those are the points which I really want to make about buying your camera. I'm not going to say that Nikon is better than Fuji or Canon is better than Nikon. It is purely and simply up to you and what you want to, to do as a photographer. Now, this is a really big thing to consider. What type of photographer, what type of photography do you want to do? Are you just going to use a camera to go to parties? In which case, you can't really beat your iPhone. Are you going to be a street photographer? Again, the iPhone is a great camera to use. And a simple camera with a fixed fixed lens like this X100S, the Fuji X100S with a 23mm lens. Superb street photography. Are you going to basically be looking to do landscape work? Well, an argument could be made that the Fuji X100S is ideal for that. But you may want to consider getting the X, X-T10 or X-T1, a little bit more money admittedly. I don't have to go to this expense, with an 1855 zoom lens fitted to it to give you that adaptability of your shot. All this doesn't really happen straight away. With photography, you get into a particular mode and a particular style and what you enjoy taking. You may be a portrait photographer. You really like to take portraits of people. That may be street photographers or total strangers. That may be photographs of your family. But one thing you've got to remember is there's all these cameras that are around. Yes, there's a couple that will cover all basic skills. But there are others that will actual fact be uh, specific in their uh, in their design for the skill you want to set. So I thought what we would do just very briefly is I'm going to go to screen share here on the uh, on Google Plus, and I'm going to show you some photo photographers which have uh, caught my eye, which hopefully will be of interest to you, um, with um, with their style of photography, and. This is where I find it very interesting as regards to how we look at photographs ourselves. Let's take the case of a photographer, American photographer, Jack Hollingsworth. Jack Hollingsworth is an iPhone photographer. Let's just click on a couple of his images here and you can see what Jack can produce just using the iPhone. He truly is an amazing photographer. And the phot photographs you're seeing here are all taken with the iPhone. And he's done some editing, obviously, in his uh, either on the iPhone or on his computer. But it just goes to show you what can be achieved with the right composition and thought and presentation at the end of it. He truly is an amazing photographer using just an iPhone. It's something which is a person that I think uh, even just to look at it for skills as regards to a photographer would be worthwhile looking at um, with his uh, his style and his editing skills and his uh, composition. Another photographer I wanted to show you is Elif Suyabatlas. She goes by the name of Fish Eye Dreams on uh, Instagram. Again, Elif uses an iPhone and she uses an app in her iPhone called Hipstamatic. You can see when you go onto her Instagram site where she uh, highlights uh, basically the filter that's been used in the, in the image. But you can see again from her work, it is a creation, com uh, composition using just the iPhone. The point I'm making here is you don't have to go and spend a lot of money to produce quality images. She is probably one of my favorite um, iPhone photographers at, the, at uh, this time. She concentrates a lot, a lot on street photography. Sorry. Then we go up a little stage further. This is Irene Kung. Now, Irene, in actual fact, was an artist. And as you probably saw from my show, previous show, Photography Live and Uncut, uh, it was suggested that she should photograph the uh, buildings that she was in actual fact painting. And uh, she uses uh, a Hasselblad. Now, this is really top end camera here.
But again, we're looking at photographs here. She's chosen the tool for her trade that will allow her to do her editing work and create her architectural fine art work, as you can see here. Move on to another photographer who uses a Canon. This is Julia Anna Gosparado, another guest of mine on the show. And she takes the images and does a lot of Photoshop work on the images. Uh, but again, the point I'm making is she choose, has chosen the tool for what she wants to create. This is a uh, work done with the, with the Canon. We can show the XF detail here. Comes down to the bottom. It should say that uh, she's using a Canon there somewhere. Can't actually find it actually on that particular one, but you can see her work where she's, the camera is her tool. And then she takes it into Photoshop to create such stunning um, fine art photography. Finally, I want to show you uh, some images from a photographer called Damien Lovegrove. Now, Damien is a Fuji user. He uses the, uh, in this case, this particular photograph is taken with the X-T10, the one I've just shown you, but using a, a 90 millimeter lens. And Damien is a highly respected portrait boudoir photographer, uh, works commercially and is uh, a Fuji X photographer. And you can see from these lovely images, which he's posted on Instagram. Again, he's chosen the camera, the tool for his trade. In this case, the Fuji X-T10 is still being shown here as images. And um, the majority of these images are taken with a 90 millimeter F2 lens. And from this, you can see great images, classical composition, and very good uh, editing work done after the, uh, the shoot has been completed. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those images and they really did. The reason why I chose those particular photographers was the fact of the different types of cameras that they used to do their work. As shown there was the iPhone, the Hasselblad top end, a Canon, a full frame Canon uh, camera. And then of course, uh, Damien at the end there using the Fuji, which is as we term a one and a half crop uh, sensor. I'm going to come to that at another show when, when I talk about the, uh, the sensors and what can be achieved. And I think there is a, a lot of uh, discussion out there. What is the best sensor to use? And if you really look at uh, the way certain work is being produced these days, there's only specific reasons for you to be using a particular size sensor. Maybe the customer has requested, I want that size of image created by it. There's so many different options available to you out there. The main thing at the end of the day is choosing a camera which in actual fact is going to work for you. I know I've said it before, but it is so important for you to realize that you must learn how to use your camera. And the camera doesn't make you a better photographer. Don't get caught in the trap that you're not happy with your images. I've got to buy myself another camera to improve that work. It doesn't work. I made this mistake myself. I started off in the digital world with a Nikon D D50 and I went to a D200. I then went on to other cameras in the Nikon range, purely and simply hoping that each time I bought the next camera down the line, it was going to improve my photography. And I had to stop and look at it. The photographs I was producing with my D50 were just as good as the photographs I was producing with my D200 and, and later the Nikon 1 series uh, camera. It made no difference at all in the camera that I bought. Basically, you're, you've the way you improve your photography is by practice and taking more and more images and getting out there and making an effort to go out. Even if it's just a walk with your dog or walk with your family, take your camera and take some images. And again, it doesn't matter what you're taking. 
it could be trees on a on a street it could be the cars in the street anything just basically give yourself practice learn how to control your camera get out of the program mode and get into aperture and shutter priority modes which are available on your camera and of course the manual modes we'll come to all this at a later stage in the in later episodes but what i really wanted to establish with you today no matter what camera you've got whether it is a 35 millimeter film camera or just the small compact cameras i said earlier on this old l12 which i hardly use now in actual fact the iphone or if you want to step up to the plate and get yourself a good start with a uh, with a mirrorless camera in this case the fuji i've got the x100s and the xt10 here in my right hand whatever camera you buy will work it will produce quality images for you and you if you go through the process of learning about your camera using the manual and maybe even the actual fact going out and buying a specific book for that camera that will help you as well because the, the those books which are produced by uh, writers that have used the camera for a period of time will go through the finer detail of what can be achieved um, I've got an excellent book which is related to the X100S by Kevin Mullins. Fantastic book. So much to be learned from that book outside of what the manual shows you as well. That neatly comes, brings me round rather to every episode. I'll show you a book which I think is worthwhile you, uh, you purchasing to consider how you develop through. I find books are such a very good way of learning about photography. I've got a huge bookcase here. I mention it every time on my show with some, some fantastic photographers from Henri Cartier-Bresson and Ansel Adams right the way through to the modern day, dare I use the term modern day photographers, Michael Kenner and, and uh, Jonathan Critchley and Damien Lovegrove as well. I've got a photograph uh, photography book of his there as well. I'll be coming to those later on as we go because they are specific in their genre with the way those photographers have taken their path. And I think it's very important. You may be interested to do street photography, but I think it's important also for you to buy books that have been created by landscape photographers. They help you with composition and they help you to, uh, to see what is out there and, and how different photographers look at different different views i've got a fantastic book which i'll show you later on by william eggleston another fantastic book by uh soul lighter both guys have produced some fantastic work which teach you so much as regards to composition depth of field style of photography and and even editing processes but the book i wanted to show you today which is still available how to read a photograph now this book in actual fact is written on basically on the basis of a of a, a critique pleasant critique of photographers from the very early beginnings it starts with william henry fox talbot you know, the, the guy who basically started or created the uh, the the film photography right the way through to late, later photographers joel sternfield and uh, william eggleston and moria moriyama dido uh, all sorts of photographers here ansel adams is in here um we've got uh, bill brandt mentioned here as well i haven't got a camera fixed up to to show you these but this book is really a great book to get started with to see the different styles this one one of my favorite photographers from uh, way back when um brassai took some fantastic images of of france at night time and of course the classic Henri cartier bresson which you'll find that so many photographers will relate to his work as a as the one that really piqued their interest if you can get this book i hope you're interested in reading books and uh, the, this is a great reference book to start your library off and i would highly recommend it for you to view photographs read what the the author has to say uh about this this one was written by ian jeffrey uh what he has to say about the way this the uh, the photographers have created their work and the compositions they've created another classic one here uh, which you'll if you as you go through and look on the internet for these images that one by andre cortez so I would highly recommend that book for you to purchase 
to start your collection off if you haven't got it already uh if you have get back into that book and see what's available out there for you so it's just a really uh i want to keep this show to around about 20 30 minutes i've just clicked over the 20 minutes for the show and it's going to be live on um uh live on google plus now as we see it's recorded to youtube and then i'll also be posting up on uh, itunes as well for you to to listen up it's basically just a very brief introduction to choosing your camera and making sure that camera is right for you little addition to that if it just so happens that you've got a very good friend who's also involved uh, with photography and has got a camera and a selection of lenses already it may be worthwhile considering purchasing that same line you never know that uh, good friend of yours may lend you a couple of lenses from time to time so that may be one issue where i would sway away from what i've been saying you're choosing the camera for you but please remember once you pick that camera up in the sh in the camera shop and you're talking to the guy think for yourself as regards to the camera please don't get swayed by what the salesman is telling you because nine times out of ten he's working for himself as regards to getting the best priced camera sold to you make sure you get the camera which in actual fact is going to work for you and that all buttons and everything come second hand i chose the xt10 because i like uh buttons and levers and dials to do the work for me i'm not a great lover of going into menus to change around uh, what my camera is going to work for me when I'm out shooting. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this short show. It's, uh, as I say, we're going to keep it to around about between 20 and 30 minutes each time. There'll be another show uh, next week on Sunday, same time. And then I'm going to start interlacing it with Photography Live and I'll switch it to the Thursday. Um, but I'll be putting plenty of uh, advertisement out there for hopefully for, for you to join me and uh let's learn together if there's any questions you want to ask me please don't hesitate to put a question in on the youtube link or maybe even in the google plus uh post that's been there or tweet me photo live and uncut um i'll be happy to answer your questions the next time around we come to the next show i want it to evolve basically as an online workshop for you I'm not going to charge you for it at all. I'll probably organise some meetups as well. well. We'll meet up in uh, local uh, local area. I'm just south of London, so we probably London is an ideal place to meet up, have a coffee, and we can go and do a walkabout and talk about photography and uh, ask me some questions there and then. But uh, that's that's later on down the line. Let's get the show up and running first off. Please don't hesitate to send me a message, and I'll be delighted to answer your questions on the next show hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to cameras i hope it's helped you if you've got a camera a new camera and you're dying to get to use it just go ahead and start shooting and next week we'll start talking about some aspect of photography uh, i'll give that some thought and i'll post it what the program's going to be next time hope you've enjoyed it and uh, see you next time all the best thanks again bye bye